Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam. Thanks for hanging out with me again today. And today's video is another mini. Uh, so just got back from the hobby shop and picked up the Arma Typhon Grom. Um, I kind of wanted to get the Granite Grom originally. And then a few videos came out of it. And I was like, well, it is awful small. And then this came out. And even though it is small, I couldn't really pass it up. It looks like a really, really fun car. And I really like the designs they did with it. Some of the features it has of it. And, you know, it looks like it actually will probably do pretty good out on the track. So I'm not going to do a grand unboxing or anything. I'm just going to get it all laid out. We'll talk about it real fast. I'm going to get the battery charged up. And then we're going to go out and hit the track. So give me a second. I'm going to get this stuff unboxed. And then we'll talk about it. <clears throat> all right. So the meat and potatoes is the little Typhon Grom. And, man, this thing is cool. Um, tires feel nice got a nice tread pattern on there um, no foams but they feel like they will dig in pretty well they're hard but not like rock hard and they're soft but not like floppy soft so they're kind of like that perfect little in-between basher tire um, oil field shocks all the way around seems to be nice this thing is awesome I love that Super simple, no body clips, and it looks like it's going to hold on there nice and tight. And then you have the inside of the car. It's all packed in there very nicely. Um, you have your uh, 380 motor with the heat sink, your 2-in-1 ESC speed controller. Then you have your battery with the little tiny EC2 plugs on it. Um, you know, everything in there is nice and protected. And, you know, even if dirt gets in there, there's nothing that's going to get in there and chew up a drive shaft or get into the gearbox. Now, what I was saying that I really, really liked about this is the way this body goes on. Um, I've seen it in several other people's videos. Um, but once you get that body on, um, it is tucked super tight all the way around. Um, goes down into little grooves on the side. And it's just so tucked in there that I've seen a lot of people, you know, running them and hardly having anything in there. But it also has little vents on the back back here to let the warm air through. So there will be air going from front to back as you're running it to keep things cooler, but also keeping all the little rocks and stones and stuff out of the chassis, even though the chassis looks like it's very well protected. Um, you know, typical Arma. Uh, chassis. It's got the honeycomb and everything in it. Now what you get in the kit is you get your get started guide, which this is in multiple languages, so it is kind of beefy. Um, but basically it just tells you all about the radio, the car, the settings, and all that stuff. Um, this is the one I was more interested in, so this is your technical guide. Uh, so it quickly shows you getting the body on and off. <clears throat> then it shows you taking the, the motor or the transmission and drive shaft cover off, taking the motor out, taking the motor mount out, changing the pinions. It gives you the different um, pinion gears that you can use in here. So you can run a 16 to a 22. And then um, it's basically it comes with an 18 uh, tooth with a 59 tooth spur. Uh, but it shows you reassembling everything. <clears throat> and then the most important thing, a full blown, uh, a full exploded view of the car with all the part numbers on there. So if you break something, you can reference that, figure out what the part is, figure out what the part number is and get those stuff ordered. Um, comes with Spectrum's little tiny smart charger. Um, yeah, this is the G2 for the 2S. Uh, so any little USB port um, that you can find should charge it. I believe they have a specific recommended power, but pretty much any will do. Um, just the lower voltage will take a little bit longer time. Um, you get some of the little plastic shock spacer clips to adjust your preload on your shock springs. It comes with a really nice new Arma tool that they're including in a lot of their kits and the extra hex wrench. So you got a wheel nut on one side, your common size on the other, and then you have the slightly smaller one for like the pinion. So I believe everything on here is hex hardware and everything is basically the same size. I think it's a two mil. Yeah, so you got two mil all the way around, um, except for probably the pinion and maybe a couple other small areas. But basically the, the, this tool will get you 90% of everything you need to do. So you get your little Spectrum SLT2 radio. Now it's kind of a no frills radio, but it's really all you need. And it actually has more than you th it appears. Of course, you need throttle, you need steering. You have steering trim, you have steering uh, endpoint, so you can have slow, have very little steering if you're trying to go fast, or more steering if you're out on track. Now, speed-wise, you have a 50, 75, and 100 selector on the back. So if you're giving this to a little kid, you can knock it down to 50. Once they get a little bit more better, uh, once they get a little better with it, you can kick it up to 75, and then up to 100. Um, 
also will help adults if you guys aren't great at running cars yet. And then, you, of course, you have your steering reverse as well. Um, takes four AA batteries, which they give you in the kit. So, a true ready to run. You don't need to buy anything else but the $140 Grom, and you're ready to run. So, um, ain't nothing to it but to get the battery out, charge it, and hit the track. So I will be back with you once we get out on the track and get it run around. Now I'm not going to probably run around the yard. I may run around it a little bit, um, but basically this is going to be for the track. So take it around the track, and then once I get that done, I will come back and let you know how it went. Thank you. 
All right, guys, so we just got back from running the Grom around the track. Unfortunately, I was a bit impatient and didn't fully charge the battery, so I got about 10 minutes of runtime out of it. So the one complaint I have with this car is proprietary, semi-proprietary batteries. I hate them. If you're going to make a battery for an RC car, or an RC car to accept a battery, make it so it will work with anything. Smart battery, smart charger. Um, I don't have a high output brick for this. You need, per the manual, they recommend um, use a 20 watt USB-C power adapter 2.0 or 3.0 for the quickest charge time, approximately an hour and a half with a 20 watt output brick. So the one I have is not high output. So this was gonna take forever. So I hooked it up to the X2 Pro charger. Um, wouldn't charge it. Kept giving me a fault error. Now I had a little XT20 plug on there, but evidently because it is not jiving with the smart battery, um, it kept giving me an error. So I was forced to sit around with this and it sat there for about a little over an hour, I guess, charging on that. And I was like, screw it. It's good enough. I'm ready to go. You know, my GoPro batteries charged quicker than this did. That's my only gripe about the car. Now, the only other complaint, and it's not really a complaint, it's just an observation, my track is still very bumpy for a car this size. You could tell it was out there skittering around and every now and then, you know, it would just take a sharp turn to the left or the right because it hit a bump or, you know, as I was turning, it hit a bump and the front end dug in or whatever, you know, it's small cars on my track just struggle in general. Um, overall, it did very well for one of the smaller cars. Um, very impressed with the speed. It's plenty nippy for a brush motor. Um, I was also very happy to see when I opened it up, there was just a little bit of tiny dusty dirt in the back and, you know, it's covered underneath. You know, it was slinging dirt and sand and mud and stuff all over the place. So the body does very good about protecting it. Now, when I picked it up after the run, you know, I just bent down and grabbed it because it's that small. You could feel the heat from the motor and the, the heat fins up here dissipating all the motor. And it sits really tight to that body. So you can feel it right through the body. Now it does, I forgot to mention earlier, it does have a fan in here blowing air across the heat fins and the motor. So front to back, like I was saying earlier. Um, you know, I don't think it was overheating. I just could tell that, you know, it was definitely running hot. So, you know, don't run batteries back to back to back to back on this, which, you know, it comes with your very specific battery for this. So unless you're buying multiple backs, and that's probably not going to be a problem. You're going to run the one and put it away. <clears throat> but overall, tires worked well. They hooked up um, nicely on the track. Um, you know, my track is wet, so it's not always the best ideal conditions anyway. But it did seem like the tires dug in very well. Um, the rear arms are absolutely coated in mud and dirt. So you can definitely tell the fronts were digging in and slinging dirt to the back. Um, you know, it took a couple good hits. Um, you know, just between misjudging a corner, bumping and diving around, um, tumbles off of the jump. For some reason, it kept wanting to kind of come up the jump sideways. So I was trying to correct it and it would tumble and make a mess out of it. But overall, it did very well. I'm happy with it. 140 bucks. I'm not upset at all. Like I said, the only complaint I have with it is the stupid smart batteries. Um, I guess if I keep buying stuff from them i'm gonna end up having to buy a smart charger which is just a pain in the ass because their smart chargers are expensive um but i don't know like i said my only complaint um radio works great feels great car ran great looks good uh actually it looks really good um and i'm glad i got the blue because i have in the bigger one i have the red and kind of silver and white so i like the blue and silver on this one so anyway guys quick video just showing you that i got one had fun on the track it does pretty good on the bumpy off-road track for as small as it is obviously bigger would be better um i may try to thin out the oil um and see if that helps um just because it is a little bit slow on the rebound so maybe thinning out the oil a little bit uh may give it a little bit quicker reaction time over those little bumps and stuff but that'll be on the next video. Until then, everybody out there, you guys be happy, be healthy, be safe, and I will catch you on the next one. See you guys.